Hello everyone, welcome back. Kevin with Survivalist Boards. Guys and gals, let's take a few minutes about putting together a boat survival kit. It's that there's no one size fits all. The type of kit that I have for this boat, my location is going to be different from the type of boat that you have, your location. That's all there is to it. A little bit about my background. I worked on tugboats for a little over a year and a half, about a year and seven months or so. Worked on two different types of tugboats. One was a push boat. All it did was push a barge from point A to point B. Did that for a month. Then another company called me. Paid a little bit more, closer to home, equal time, meaning I was on the boat and off the boat the same amount of time. The harbor tug. Big harbor tug, weighed in excess of 200 tons. Had five, one boat I worked on had a, right around 6,000 horsepower. Another boat I worked on had a little over 5,000 horsepower. I had like 24, 25 fire extinguishers on each boat, plus big water cannons, big, big monitor water cannons. They throw a bit, they would throw a stream of water like four to 500 feet, talking a six inch stream of water. And we had to have that on there for the LNG ships, liquefied natural gas ships. But anyway, 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 worked my way up, went to, took a college class, couple of college classes, became certified in lifeboat proficiency or got my certificate in lifeboat proficiency. Able seaman, I know it sounds sexual, but it's not. So anyway, I have ratings with the Coast Guard. Able seaman, had my lifeboat, my lifeboat proficiency course certificate. So. What I did was I took what I learned off the lifeboat, I mean, all, not on the lifeboat, on the tugboats, and tried to take that and apply it to this little aluminum boat. And there's a big difference between two General Electric EMDs, 3,000 horsepower each, and a little 30 horsepower Evinrude. Big difference. All right, guys, so what I did was I took a waterproof case here, loaded it up with the most common stuff that I need while doing maintenance on the boat. What are the, some, some of the common things that I need? One, and I need to replace this with a better quality crescent wrench, something like a Craftsman or something. Just a little something to get in there. Uh, turning some nuts, bolts, stuff like that. Flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. Some zip ties for the fuel line, or various lines. Multi-tool, that was in there from whenever I was working on the boat the other day. Change the fluid, change the oil in the lower unit, clean the spark plug, stuff like that. And that was on in there. This for cleaning battery terminals. Something goes wrong with a battery, uh, gets corroded up or something, which I check the terminals every time I go out. But just a little brush. Then we're starting getting into some basic stuff, like other, other types of survival kit, other types of survival gear. We've got our compass. Got a chem light in case I have to get off the boat and get on the land and spend the night on the land or spend some time on the land. I mostly go in the Angelina River. I go deep up into some sloughs, some swamps back up in there. And if I were to break down, then it would be easy for me to get on land, build some type of shelter. I carry a backpack backpack with me whenever I go out on the boat with a poncho, uh, not a poncho line or a rain poncho. So I'd be able to build myself some type of shelter. Then I've got chem light, a little fire starter to help with the fire, which I normally don't use these, but this is a survival kit. So lighter, fire starter, electrical tape, Allen wrench, and that's for a certain size of something on the boat that I forgot what it is. Signal mirror. Got my little signal mirror there that I can use to signal things. Let's see here, wire cutters, another screwdriver, little pocket knife, just a little El Cheapo pocket knife, which I usually carry a backpack and I've usually got my EDC. So this is rather redundant. Another fire starting tender, electrical tape, hose clamps. All right, now we're gonna get into a little bit more specific stuff, is that one of the main things that goes out on the boat can be the bulb. These bulbs will quit work and they'll split, dry rot, whatever, which I keep mine changed pretty regular so I shouldn't have that problem, but a spare bulb. I've had uh, going out on a river trip one time and the uh, bulb quit working. Toilet paper, essential, essential. These are the little fittings that go on the fuel tank that if uh, something happens to one of these, then I can cut the hose, put a couple of these on. I've got two of them, one for each end. 
scuba diving knife. Stainless steel, need to clean it up, but it's in there because it's stainless steel. It does have some crud on it. Hopefully never rust. These are the little nuts that go on the uh, trolling motor. Trolling motor. We're going to get to that here in just a minute. Emergency mosquito repellent in case I get beached or, or have to make land. I've got a little bit of mosquito repellent in there. Variety of hose clamps. These are for the fuel line, stuff like that. Variety of hose clamps. Some extra Allen wrenches that I had. I guess that Allen wrench there. Yeah, that's what I did. I was doing something. I forget what I was working on with that for that. Okay, extra terminals. Uh, cable lugs for the battery. Not really needed, just had some extra. Rather than them sitting them in the sitting in the storeroom, not doing anything, throw them in here. Just to have them, guys. Just to have them. Extra plug. Extra brand new plug. It's never been used. Oh, I didn't realize I had three of these in there. Man, okay. Okay. Not realize it. But anyway, these things here will go bad. They'll start leaking air. They've got a little seal. Let's see if we can get up inside there. I don't know if that's gonna pick up or not, but come on guys. Open that up got a little seal inside of there and that seal will go bad and start leaking air where the fuel where the motor cannot pull the fuel up motor operates by pulling fuel out of the fuel can put a little vacuum and so if that seal goes out then it'll start sucking air not able to do it this is my backup for if the main engine goes out then I've got the propeller the trolling motor and I have used the trolling motor to get home before. The water pump went out on the main motor, and I used the trolling motor to go to a few miles, making the last few miles to the boat launch. So, yeah, extra prop. And not only that, but you, out, you hit a log or something. I have broke one of these off before by hitting a log, submerged log. It's no fun. Kind of ruins your fishing trip. Not able to use your trolling motor back up in those sloughs. So I carry an extra one of those. One, to make sure I've got it, in case the main motor goes out, and if the uh, break, a, break a propeller off, then I can keep fishing. So guys and gals, that's my little basic survival kit. What about food and water? Well, food is carried in my backpack, the water will be an ice chest, so that's no big deal. Mainly what I keep in here is that if I'm working around the house, and I'm working on the boat, and I see something that... Man, I, I know I use this tool for something specific on the boat. Then I take it and I throw it in the in the uh, boat in this survival kit. Chem light. If I have to get on land, compass. Uh, some of them sloughs back up in there get kind of confusing. A while back, I was up in a slough with my son, and I wasn't sure which way to turn. I know I needed to go east. The sun was straight up north, so I was like. And the backpack at the time, the backpack I grabbed did not have a compass on it. All I needed to do was turn east. That's all I needed to do. And so, do a comp after that, I threw a compass. This is just a, like a little cheap dollar, two dollar compass I ordered off eBay. But it points north. That's the main thing. Just get it to point north. Oh well, yeah, that was a good trip with my son. Had a good time. Learned a lot. All right, guys and gals. That's it for not. That's it for now. I mean, things are kind of redundant. I've got this little pocket knife in here. If I lose that, so what? I bought this scuba diving knife mainly because it was made out of stainless steel, but it does have some crud on it. A lot of this is redundant. <coughs> Excuse me, because I will have usually an EDC, or I bring my backpack. I will have a knife inside my backpack. Well, guys and gals, that's it for now. Of course, this type of kit may not work for you. you may be up in Canada or something and need need different specific stuff have a different type of boat than I do you need different things for your type of boat mine is for the uh, six gallon gas cans you may not have six gallon gas cans you may have built-in fuel cans but anyway guys and gals that's it for now thanks for watching the video like I said I spent a little over a year and a half working on a couple of different tugboats Went to college, uh, took a couple of classes, got moved up, got a rating through the Coast Guard. All right, guys and gals, so I took what I tried to, what I learned off the tugboats and tried to apply it to my personal watercraft. 
Okay, guys and gals, that's it for now. And I will talk to y'all later.